totality is paramount, all other considerations sit even further back than usual, particularly style. Take three role crossovers, a genre with space for all manner of considerations. Once you package three rows of seats, plump out the silhouette to maximize interior volume, and pull the belt line low for the sack of the visibility, you're left with a fairly bland template onto which to project your brand's aesthetics. Not that buyers in the big crossover class seem discouraged by their vehicle's sameness. Sales success in mainstream segments often requires automakers to color inside the lines. That said, the crossover's role as a minivan surrogate means that plenty of its passengers will color all over the interior. With an abundance of space, comfort, and luxury, the pilot completed its 40,000-mile assignment in just 11 months. Thought it passed through some 20 states and four Canadian provinces in our hands, once piling up more than 7,000 miles in a single month. Those highway miles help keep our fuel consumption at an average of 22 miles per gallon, outstanding for a 4,351-pound bus. Honda redesigned the pilot's 3.5-liter V6 now turning out 280 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque, for this generation. Cheaper pilots back that with a 6-speed auto, while the up-level touring and elite trims get a 9-speed. attractive place to pass the miles. It's inventive, appealing, and loaded with storage bins, cubbies, depressions, and the like. It literally has storage on top of storage. There's the usual map pocket along the bottom of the front doors, with the second tier of receptacles above that, and then the door pull on top, which doubles as a shallow storage cubby. And the console between the front seats could swallow a full grown Lhasa Apsil with room for a chew toy or two. Visibility all around is excellent. Riding in back and then switching to the driver's seat made us jealous of the enormous sunroof enjoyed by back seat passengers, though the entertainment screen that flaps down from the ceiling is so small that it might be contributing to the myopia outbreak in today's children. As satisfying as the pilot is when stationary, the logbook was filled with numerous, er, off-color comments. Honda found a startling array of fussy ways to make the pilot call negative attention to itself. The annoyances begin before you even start driving, with the nonsensical push-button shifter in which park and neutral are the same size buttons in different planes, drive is a different size and shape, and nested at an angle in a chrome trim ring, and reverse is a pull switch. That these buttons and switches take up precisely as much space on the console as a regular shifter on the and transmission calibrations are so jumpy that seven of us took to driving the pilot in economy mode for the more tolerable, relaxed programming. Similarly, the engine stop-start system's logic lags its peers, on several occasions shutting the engine off in the middle of parallel parking maneuvers. These are commodity systems now they should be simple and intuitive. That good examples are found in economy cars but not in a nearly $50,000 Honda is supremely disappointing. Nearly every mainstream car brand in the U.S. today sells a three-row crossover, giving the pilot about a dozen direct competitors. If you stretch a few grand beyond the extremes of the pilot's pricing spectrum, it has about that many indirect competitors. Two. Few are as attractively finished as the pilot, and fewer still are likely to offer such an affordable ownership experience. But most share its core competencies, and few are as annoying in full trim. The pilot is a good crossover. The pilot elite is a good crossover. Overwhelmed by the very thing and activity focused on the